Hello and welcome to A Word for This Day podcast. I'm Jory Schaefer, the show's host and creator, and it is my joy and my pleasure to welcome you today. Welcome back to all you regular listeners. Thank you for coming back day after day. I love being on this journey with you. And welcome to anyone who's found us for the first time. It's no accident that you are here today, friends, so please don't run off quite yet. Please stick around for a bit and let's see what the Lord has for us today as we think about the truth that is in his word. All of his word is true. The sum of all of his word is truth. And Jesus, when he was praying back to the Father, says, your word is truth. Sanctify them in your truth. He was praying for his disciples. He was praying for us. Um, that we would be sanctified. And that sanctification, that is a churchy word uh, that means to set us apart, to make us holy, to make us who he wants us to be. And it is done in spending time with him in his word. And so or that's one of the ways that he uses to uh, sanctify his children. And I'm so thankful that he would love us so that he would make us uh, make that opportunity available for us to know more of him. And so uh, know that I continue to pray for you day after day. I continue to pray that the Lord would draw you closer to him and give you more of a desire to know him and his word and that you will be intentional about your uh, daily time with him, that it won't be something that you do to just check a box, but that you are truly wanting to draw closer to him and hear from him and uh, I know that he is faithful to do that if we uh, if we seek him with a right heart, friends. The uh, scripture says, seek the Lord while he may be found. And would you consider sharing this podcast with your friends, family, neighbors, strangers, just anyone who you think may receive a blessing from it? You know, there's uh, people all over the world listening to this podcast, and if we could just continue not to share me, but to share his word. Oh, friends, what a difference it makes uh, because his word is just, it does so much. It is absolutely necessary. It is our spiritual nourishment. Jesus said, man does not live on bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And then also I think about what the psalmist said in Psalm 107 about how his word uh, heals. Listen to this. It says in Psalm 107, verse 19, um, Then they cried out to Yahweh in their trouble. He saved them out of their distresses. He sent his word and healed them and provided them escape from their destructions. Let them give thanks to Yahweh for his loving kindness and for his wondrous deeds to the sons of men. Let them also offer sacrifices of thanksgiving and recount his works with joyful singing. May we do that. May we share his word. Oh, friends, our world needs peace. Our world needs healing. Our our world needs Jesus. All of that is found in him. And so um, may we share it. And if I didn't say it already, know that I love to hear from you. So please consider sending me a message. Sometime I heard from one of my dear friends, Jelena, this morning. And I'm just so thankful for you, friend. She was my very first best friend um, when we were like three or four. And uh, such a precious, precious friend. We don't get to see each other, but we communicate (laughs) by text and every once in a while we'll touch base and I'm just so thankful for you as well as all my other friends. Well, our verse for the day for June the 23rd, 2024 comes from the sixth chapter of Romans, Romans chapter six, verse 23, and it reads as follows for the Legacy Standard Bible. For the wages of sin is death. But the gracious gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Oh, friends, I am so thankful to be parked here today. You know, I was uh, recording and actually had recorded uh, a reel that matches this. If you watch uh, or follow me on any of the short form videos on 
uh, YouTube. It used to be on Facebook, but I got hacked, so it's not on Facebook anymore, or on Instagram or on TikTok. I put a reel each day with our verse for the day and just showing my little journaling thing that I've talked to you about. And I record those several days ahead. And I recorded for this day, uh, Romans 3.23. 3.23, not 6.23. <laughs> and I got ready to start recording here. And in just a minute ago, I, I read the verse from Romans 3.23. And I thought, oh, it's not March. It's June. So if you see the reel and you see however I'm going to fix it, I'm not sure how I'm going to fix that um, and how I'm going to white it out. That's what happened. Both of those are absolutely necessary to understanding our need for our, for a Savior. Uh, but I'm excited for us to park here today and see what the Lord has for us. Now, if you, and this just reminds you that I am just human, and sometimes I get on the wrong track, although uh, it is never on the wrong track to be in God's Word. It did not follow with my the plan, the way that I had things set out, I just written it wrong and, uh, and had it in my mind wrong just because we need to know that we are all sinners and that the wages of sin is death. But, oh, isn't he gracious to us? Isn't he so gracious? So I'm excited for us to park here. But first, we need to think about where we are in the scripture. You know, if you've been on this journey with me for very long, I think it is wise for us to do that, uh, to get our bearings straight um, and to get the appropriate context so that we can know this, so that we can understand it, so that we, uh, so that it is not twisted around um, and that we can uh, better share it with others. And so we are in one of Paul's letters, and it's that letter to the Romans. Remember, that the um, New Testament begins with the four Gospels, then it moves to early church history, then to Paul's letters. We have 13 of those in our canon of Scripture, and then it moves into um, the general letters written by men who were not Paul, and then to New Testament prophecy, which is the book of Revelation. We know Paul wrote this letter because at the beginning it says, Paul, a slave of Christ Jesus, called as an apostle, having been set apart for the gospel of God which he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures concerning his son, who was born of the seed of David according to the flesh, who was designated as the Son of God in power according to the Spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord, through whom we received grace and apostleship for the obedience of faith among all the Gentiles for the sake of his name among whom you also are the called of Jesus Christ. To all who are beloved of God in Rome, called as saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul tells us that he is a slave. Um, he is a slave of Christ Jesus. And we talk about this frequently when we see that in his opening words that this uh, Greek word was doulos. It was truly was a slave. It was a servant who... Um, had no rights of their own. They, they completely belonged to their master. And, oh, friends, don't we want to be that way? He paid the price for us. We are not our own. We are bought with a price. And he was called to be an apostle. We know that originally he was an opponent of the gospel. He was an, a blasphemer, a persecutor, and a violent aggressor. And he was on his way to Damascus to persecute more Christians because he thought that they were blaspheming against a holy God. But God, who was so gracious just to Paul, just as he is to us, um, met him on that Damascus road in the person of Jesus and the resurrected person of Jesus. And uh, Paul had an encounter with the Lord Jesus that forever changed his life and then uh, God used him mightily to spread the good news of the gospel. And I'm so thankful that he did. And we read uh, about the, that conversion experience in Acts chapters 9, 22, and 26. And I would encourage you to visit there and read that if you haven't done that recently. But we know that after that conversion, Paul went away to uh, Arabia and then he came back and started on his missionary journeys and several of the places that he went, he would uh, write letters back to them. But 
This letter to the Romans was written to them before he had met with the believers in Rome. He had intended to go there. We read that in Romans 1.13, but it had been prevented. And, you know, I'm thankful for God's providence that um, he had the way that he wanted things to go because I don't know that we would have had this letter written like this to the Romans uh, if Paul hadn't wanted to lay out everything that he wanted to make sure that they understood. Um, and it's just such a wonderful letter. It is so deep. There's so much here, but it contains the reason for why we need a Savior and then what Jesus has done for us and then what we have in him because he's our Savior. And, oh, there's just so much here, and I love it when we're in this letter to the Romans. And I just love all these words, all these verses. You know, I've told you this before. Um, throughout the different episodes that we've been in, that oh, just all the words, all the verses are so dear to me. And I pray they are to you. Um, and so I, there's many favorite parts that I have, but I am so thankful for the way God used Paul uh, and inspired him to write this just wonderful explanation. Remember uh, that Rome was kind of a center of intellectualism, and they had uh, lots of people giving um, uh, arguments and apologetics about why people should believe their way of thought and a lot of philosophy, I should say. And uh, Paul knew that that was the environment there. He had been, uh, I'm sure, inspired by the Holy Spirit to write that. And so he knew he needed to lay out in a very orderly account. So he goes all the way back to the beginning of Romans. And there he talks about the righteousness of God and how um, God allows people to know his righteousness and to know his eternal character. But many of those, many who choose to walk away from him and uh, choose to just walk in rebellion and disobedience, um, choose to deny the truth. And then over a certain amount of time, and we don't know what that time is for each person, at some point God will give them over to those uh, those fleshly ways and over to a debased mind. And that's so sad because that is exactly what we see rampant in the world today um, because people have believed the lie of Satan um, and just like Eve believed it in the garden and took somebody else's word over God's word. But God does not leave uh, people without a way to know him. He He um, makes it evident in his creation. He makes it evident in uh, giving people to tell the truth. He gives us his word um, now. And so no man is without excuse, we read here. And we read that... Um, the law, you can't be righteous by following the law. And we've talked about that over and over again. You can't be righteous or seen as righteous as just by following all these rules that there is faith involved. And faith is the main thing. And if we have faith in God and we know that he's sovereign and that he is the creator and that he has holds all life in his hands and that he's made a way for us to come to him, then we will want to do what pleases him. We will want to be obedient. And Paul reminds them that um, there's none righteous on their own. No, not one for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And uh, then the good news comes in, and I'm so thankful because there in 3.23, right after that, where he says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, being justified as a gift by his grace through the redemption which is in Christ Jesus. We are justified as a gift. We're justified because he graciously allows us to be justified through faith in him. It is truly a gift. We cannot earn it. You can't earn salvation by following rules. We we will want to be obedient to him as a result of um, wanting to live out uh, a, th a life of thanksgiving and a life of praise for what he's done, but we cannot earn salvation. It's by grace. 
It's for grace. By grace, you've been saved through faith. It's not of your own works. It's a gift of God that no one may boast. And then he talks about, in chapter 4, Abraham's uh, faith, and that was counted to him as righteousness in David's faith. And then that while we were yet still sinners, Christ died for us. And uh, what a blessing that truly is. And then he brings up the question that he knew people would ask. And we talked about these things a few days ago um, when he says, you know, grace abounded where sin increased, grace abounded all the more. So should, is it all right for us to keep on sinning all on purpose so that there'll be more grace? And he says, by no means, how can it, we who have died to sin still live in it? Because he's made us, friends, uh, a new person when we believe in him. He's given us a new heart. He's given us a new outlook. And our desire should be to please him, not to go after uh, what self wants, to, but to honor God who has graciously saved us. And so I want to pick up here in 15 and read forward to our verse for the day. And I think it will be such an encouragement to you. Um, it says, what then? Shall we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? May it never be. Do you not know that when you go on presenting yourselves to someone as slaves for obedience, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness. So he's saying you will be slaves to whoever you obey. So if you want to obey the flesh and want to obey sin, then that is going to lead straight to death. If you want to be a slave to righteousness, completely sold out to righteousness, righteousness having its full authority over you, then that leads to life because that is the way of God. And then it says in verse 17, but thanks be to God that though you were slaves to sin, and all of us were friends, before we uh, accepted the Lord Jesus, those of us who have accepted him, but thanks be to God that though you were slaves of sin, you obeyed from the heart that pattern of teaching to which you were given over. And having been freed from sin, you became slaves of righteousness. May we be slaves of righteousness. Oh, I love that. I'm speaking in human terms, Paul says, because of the weakness of your flesh. For just as you presented your members as slaves to impurity and to lawness, lawlessness, leading to further lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness, leading to sanctification. And remember, we talked about what sanctification means at the beginning of this podcast, that it is um, God setting us apart, making us holy, changing us who, into who he wants us to be. And if we are slaves to righteousness and Jesus is our righteousness, if we submit completely to him, then that leads to our sanctification. And he says in verse 20, For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. Therefore, what benefit were you then having from the things of which you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. He's saying, you know, what benefit is it of following your flesh and being a slave to things that are going to lead to death? There is no benefit in that. And then in verse 22, but now having been freed from sin, and we were freed from sin by believing in Jesus, accepting that gift that he so graciously offered. Now having been freed from sin and enslaved to God, you have your benefit leading to sanctification and the end eternal life. That is our end goal, friends. And then he said in our verse for the day, for the wages of sin is death. But the gracious gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Friends, that is a big, major tenet of the good news of the gospel. All of us are sinners. We were in need of a Savior. God sent his son Jesus to this earth to die for us, to pay the penalty that we owed because the wages of sin, what we get paid for sin is death. That is what we deserve. That is what is heading our way if we are slaves to sinfulness. That leads to death. Walking according to the flesh leads to death. But God has graciously, through his son Jesus, made a way in that wonderful gift uh, of 
sending his son and his son dying on the cross for us, for us to have that gracious gift of eternal life. Either we can uh, have to pay of what is owed and that is our is death, or we can receive that gift because Jesus already paid the price for us. That's what he did on the cross. He made a way. I love what Paul says in Galatians chapter 4, verse 4, where he says, But when the fullness of time came, God sent forth his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, so that he might redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God sent forth the Spirit of his Son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father, Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir through God. God sent Jesus at just the right time for us. He sent him uh, while we were yet still sinners. For those of us right now in 2024, he sent him way before we were born, knowing that all of us would sin, knowing that we would have a sin nature. He made a way. He has been so gracious to us, friends. And If we want to continue, if people want to continue in rebellion, in walking in the flesh, that leads to death. But Jesus has made a way. That is the good news. We must share that. Let's thank him for that. Thank him that he loved us so because he didn't have to. He could have just said, I'm done like he did with all the people besides Noah and his wife and his sons and their wives. He could have said, I'm just starting over. Um, And he would have every right to do that, especially because of the way that people uh, are and because of the way all of us sinners are. But he loved us so that he sent his son. So may we accept that gracious gift of eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. May we uh, follow him. May we deny ourselves, pick up our crosses daily and follow him. May we seek to serve. May we seek his kingdom. May we honor him in all that we do for his glory. Blessings to you, friends. Until next time.